All right, y'all. So, um, as promised, I wanted to sit down and discuss the next 10 games for um, the Chicago Bulls. And I'm not going to talk about them in order. I'm just going to list the teams and go from there. So, they're going to end up playing the Heat twice. They got Charlotte, Denver again, the Lakers again, Detroit again, Toronto again. Um, did I mention the Nuggets? Nuggets again. Um, the Knicks as well. And did I mention Brooklyn? I, yeah, Brooklyn. So most of these are games they've already played against teams. And so um, it's going to be quite interesting. Some of these games are going to be important or interesting because certain players were missing. So LeBron just came back. Who knows how long he's playing. He could get injured again. He could be in a lineup, not be in a lineup. Um, Joker didn't play this last game, so he could be in the lineup. Uh, we get the Heat twice. Um, Kay Cunningham didn't play in the first one. Um, Colin Sexton is out for the year. Uh, he, had, he tore his meniscus, so he's gone for the year. Um... And, and a couple other tidbits here and there. But some of these teams, we don't know who is going to be playing based on, you know, whatever could happen. You know, someone we could talk about now could be available now and won't be available by the time the game comes. Like when I did this last 10 games here, I thought the Lakers would have LeBron. They didn't, okay? Completely changed how that game went. Um... If he's playing, changes the way that game is. Obviously, if he's not playing, it changes the way that game is. You know, the game with the Nuggets, that changes things. We also didn't have Vooch against, like, the Nuggets and stuff in the Lakers. So, so many things here at play. Um, I didn't look to see if they were there were any back-to-backs. I'm pretty sure there's at least one. Outside of that, though, it's going to be interesting. So, Brooklyn looks like they're doing better. I think they're the number one seed right now. So, I'm going to go ahead and say I predict the loss to one of the Miami games, one of the Brooklyn games. If LeBron is playing, I'm going to predict the loss for that too. Um, I'm going to also predict the loss for Charlotte. Now, a lot of people will question some of these uh, losses. Well, we beat Kevin Durant in, in Brooklyn. I think this time we played them in their house. A little bit different. Uh, plus, they're on a roll now. Or at least, let me not say on a roll, but they're playing better. They're playing more up to who they're supposed to be. Not quite there yet. Um, I think they still miss Kyrie. But they're still, they're playing, they're getting there. Um, LeBron changes things for the Lakers, okay? There's no way you could double anywhere on the, on the court with LeBron with LeBron present, okay? Maybe you could do it for Russ, but Russ will just cut to the basket, yada, yada, yada. And then that's too much size to deal with, okay? I don't think anybody is going to question healthy Lakers, okay? The the Charlotte game is the one I think most people are going to have the biggest issue with with me. Here's the thing. Consider the Denver Nuggets game, okay? Also consider the... Uh, Golden State game that we lost. Golden State could play with us small ball because they preferably want to play small ball. And they've been doing it longer and have way more experience with it. And they got veteran guys, some guys who've been running it. You know, they had Iggy and Dre and Steph. So, you know, I think Jordan Poole. You know, some of these guys have been around for a minute. So they kind of understand. They know, you know, they got continuity. Okay? Charlotte would ultimately like to play small ball with us, okay? Denver had to play small ball because they didn't have the joker. As you can see, when a team is playing small ball, it kind of changes things in, in, in essence. We kind of want a team to play standard. If they play tall ball and have the guys in the IQ to get the ball in the post and they got a good post score, Joel and B, um, then that's fine. You know, they have an advantage there. But if we can make a team that doesn't really want to go small, go small, 
that favors us. Charlotte wants to be small anyway, okay? And they got the weapons to keep up and run with us. They're going to want to run with us anyway. And if I'm not mistaken, they're up there, I think, in offense. I know their defense is bad, but their offense is up there. So that's one of the matchups I really don't necessarily want to see in the playoffs too because I feel like they match up well with us. It's like, oh, you guys just want to play small ball? Okay, fine. We'll play small ball. And they'll probably say, well, we got LaMelo. And, you know, no shots or nothing at Zoe, but we think he's the better ball brother. He's definitely the better uh, central piece to a team. And so they'll say, okay, we'll take your Zach Levine. We'll take your DeMar DeRozan. And we'll play against them. And we'll match up with our LaMelo, our Terry Rozier, our P.J. Tucker. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and Kelly Oubre. And we'll see what you got. Okay, we can play small. We can run with you. We can jump. We got leapers too. Okay, so what's up? I imagine that that's a good matchup for them, and they'll welcome that. It's one of the teams where I say, okay, I think Vooch will impact that series or that game more than anybody else. But that's a loss to me based on I just think they're willing to play the style of ball that we want to play. Okay, Lakers makes sense. Brooklyn, I think, makes sense. Um, Miami, look, Miami's still a really good team. Okay, and... As you guys can see, and I, I believe I said I think Tyler Hero is going to have a good year. I don't know if I said this on video and posted it, but Tyler Hero has been having six men of the year level year. Okay, I think he last I checked he was averaging 22 off the bench. I'm not sure if that's still the case. Point being, he's still phenomenal. But the one thing about Miami, Miami... They can play, they're versatile, but they got experience. Not continuity all necessarily, even though they do. Um, Bam, Jimmy, Tyler, Duncan, most of those guys, their core group has been around. You know, getting Kyle Lowry integrated into that, okay, fine. But they can play multiple ways. Bam is versatile enough that he can play tall ball or small ball. So they have the versatility to match up with us. And they're one of the better teams in the league. And they got weapons, and they got shooters and scores, and I believe they have a better bench. Y'all know how I feel about the bench. I feel like in a game like that, they'll put Jimmy on DeRozan exclusively and say, all right, we'll, we'll win that match and we'll take that. And they've had some battles back when they were, you know, Toronto versus Chicago. As far as Vooch, they got Bam. And speaking of Bam... Bam is versatile enough that he can guard one through five. So if he gets switched, it's not a mismatch. With DeRozan or Zach, you can go try to hunt the center. You can't do that on this team, which limits their pick and roll ability, okay? But they also got one of the Morris twins who, if need be, they'll put, if they need to put him on uh, fucking DeRozan, they can slide Jimmy to Zach Levine, Okay. They still got Kyle Lowry, who's very good at guarding and defending players. I personally, even before the season started, had Miami as being the better team. And they're one of the teams I don't want to see in the playoffs. Because I think if we if we play them, we're losing. Okay? Might be 4-1. Maybe could get to 4-2. But I don't see us winning a series with them, especially without Pat Will. And especially the way our bench is. Um, but I'm going to predict we split. For whatever reason, Miami seems like they're gettable. And Paul George beat them um, recently, and that was a, it was a pretty good game. And I'm trying to remember who else just played them and beat them. Somebody else. The Wizards. <laughs> the Wizards. You know, they beat them. Beat them by three. So they're gettable. And because of that, I'm giving us at least one of these games saying, okay, there's going to be a game where we're just going to come in and they're not going to be ready for us, and we're just going to get them, okay? I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I think we got a back-to-back. -back. I think we go play Orlando, and then come back and play Miami um, the very next game or something like that. So it'll be a back-to-back. -back. I don't think we've lost a back-to-back -back all year. So I'm going to still ride that way and say we'll win the first one, we'll lose the second one, which is later into the 10-game stretch. Um, 
this is a, I'm not going to say it's necessarily a difficult stretch because it is, because a lot of these teams are really fucking good. Um, I think it's going to be a highly competitive stretch. So much so that I'm willing to say they go 5-5, five, five, 500. Um, so much can happen between now and then. Hopefully nobody else gets COVID protocols. There was no way to predict who would have got COVID when I did the first couple of games, okay? And we still managed to eke it out, all right? Um, matter of fact, we're still on pace, I think, to hit my mark. I think I had them at 14 and 6 or 13 and 7. And we're at, if I'm not mistaken, 11 and 5. So we're still on pace to be where I had us to be anyway, regardless of, you know, COVID protocols and all this other stuff. But you never know. An injury could happen. You know, somebody could get need to rest the game or something. You, you never know. It's, we, there's no way to predict that. Um, we're going to play the Knicks again. Like, we got the Knicks today, but then in this next 10-game stretch, we got the Knicks. Um, I don't remember where this, not the one that's today, but the one for this 10-game stretch is. Um, I know they haven't been as good. I don't know what their injury reports or anything is looking like. I'm going to favor the Bulls against the Knicks again. First game, they got us, okay? Matter of fact, I'm thinking we're going to win the game today, too. But the, I, I think we, we're going to want this game. But I, I think we're I think we're gonna get them this game, and probably the next. I think we'll get the next two. Toronto got Pascal Siakam back. They didn't have him the first game. I look, and I'm gonna be frank. If there's a way that we could trade and get Pascal for this team, look. If, if you told me we had to get a, give up Pat Will to get Pascal, I would do it in a heartbeat. I would do it with, with the utmost haste, even OG Ananobi. But I would prefer to get Pascal Siakam. He is perfect. He is perfect for what we want to do. Um, this game, I think, for Toronto is also in Toronto. In which case, I want to favor that Toronto beats us. So I think if I, if, you know, just playing this back, that should be the five games. Okay, and I think we'll win all the other ones. Um, gonna be tight. <laughs> it's gonna be highly contested. We're gonna need ten toes down. Um, Vooch, I don't think is playing today unless something happens and a miracle, you know, goes off and you know he's available. Um, I don't know when he's coming back, but I am going to do all these. All these are with the assumption that we're fully healthy, minus obviously Pat Will. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough, man. Cleveland we shouldn't have any problem with, even though they're really good this year. Um I don't know if you guys remember when I was talking about the uh backcourt duos and how um arduous this was gonna be for the year. If you go look at like the schedule and the gauntlet, like there's no nights off in the backcourt. Like at all. It, it's it, it, it is, <laughs> you got to come prepared to play every night. Um, the worst backcourt we played probably was the Clippers. Well, probably Denver. Probably Denver. Denver and then the Clippers are right there. Those are the worst two backcourts we've played so far. Um that I can think of. If you guys, if I'm wrong on that, you guys will correct me in the comment section, as you usually do. Um, if there's something that I miss, you guys can definitely bring it to my attention. But um, I mean, here's the thing too. Let, let's let's talk about Cleveland for a second. Cleveland never wanted to keep Colin Sexton. They prefer Darius Garland because he's more of a traditional point guard. And I think this was contract year for Colin Sexton. With him going out for this injury, I think what's going to happen is there's going to be a sign of trade war for him. You know, because the meniscus is not that bad of an injury. You'll recover from that. You'll come back. You'll be fine. Um, so I expect Colin Sexton to be on the move. However, consider where the Cleveland Cavaliers are right now. They're winning. Okay. 
if Darius Garland can take a take another step, you get Laurie producing and Evan Mobley is <laughs> he's good. I I I I, I got to let me go ahead and um, say this publicly because y'all know how I feel about rookies. Evan Mobley is the only rookie of the class that has shocked and surprised me. He is phenomenal. He is fucking phenomenal. And Cleveland got themselves a gem. Anybody that commented that I should, you know, have kept up with him in, in particular, I apologize. You are absolutely right. The other rookies, I don't give a shit about them. At least the top five. I don't give a shit about them. I don't give a damn. They ain't did shit. They ain't did enough for me. Evan Mobley, though, he's one of those guys that's like, damn, I wish he was on my team. And so Cleveland got one. Now, I think he's out with an injury right now, so we're going to see how this looks. But um, Cleveland is going to be solid in the next couple years. You know, well-built team. Um, now, I'm not saying they're going to be, you know, unbeatable. I'm not saying they're going to get a championship. But even if they kept Colin Sexton, they still have Darius Garland, Jared Allen, who I really, really like, Laurie Markkinen, who I like, and I know a lot of people aren't high on Laurie, but I don't even know. I like him. Evan Mobley, who I like, and they got Ricky Rubio, and I can't remember the guy who they drafted, you know, the year prior off the bench. And they got like another piece or two. I can't remember. I always I always forget uh, when it comes to their back, their, their depth. Oh, yeah, they got Kevin Love and Sadie Osmond, okay? They're solid. They're going to they're going to be something in the next couple years. I guarantee you. But for them to already be winning games this early on, hey, you know they they that front office did they did their thing. Um. But yes, I publicly apologize for being wrong about Evan Mobley, and I should have paid more attention to him in particular. So I will admit that. And for those of you who are new to my channel. I will come up here and publicly admit when I'm wrong. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I would like to be wrong with this kind of stuff. So I'm. it's nice to see. I'm, I'm glad to see, you know, especially a young defensive stud. I, I prefer defense over some offense anyway. Um, but let's see. Is there any other game I need to talk about? Most of the games have already been played against teams we've already played. So there's nothing really to say. Um... I'm going to go ahead and toot my own horn again. <laughs> Do y'all believe me about Washington now? Let, let me let me get my camera closer. Let me, let me get a little bit closer. Do y'all believe me about Washington now? Everything I said, even without Rui, has lined up perfectly. Now, they was on Team Lakers with LeBron and you know, all this other stuff, yada, yada, yada. But I know what I know when I know it. You get a defensive player of the year candidate, a starting 3 and D2 guard, and a fringe starter six-man scorer on a team with a very good defensive point guard, a all-star lead the league in scoring shooting guard, you get, uh, well, I can't include Rui because he has, he ain't back yet. But you get that. You also get a defensive shooting European wing, Danny Avija, who I'm high on. And then you still got guys like Thomas Bryant, Daniel Gafford, um, Bertans, um, Raul Neto. Um, and it's, it's like it, they, still, they still got names. They got talent. Okay, they got plenty of it. In the regular season, hear me on this. In the regular season, having bodies matters because you could afford an injury and you can afford um you could afford for like some of your main guys to not have a good game then. When you look at this team, not even including Rui, Rui but they got 
every game they got six guys at minimum who can go out go out and get you 17 to 18 a night. Pretty much all this. Well, let me just Spencer, um, Bill, Kuzma, Trez. Um, who else am I I'm missing right now in my head? I'm trying to think of everybody. Uh, KCP, and then when Rui plays, Rui, and then Denny's still good, Bertans. You know, they got tons of guys who can go out there and get points. But not just that. Here's and this and I'm gonna go ahead and compare Washington and how they're built to the Bulls. See, one of the reasons our bench is so low scoring is because you have to have two to three starters in there with them at all times. And their no, the bench unit is commanded by DeMar DeRozan. Okay, he's not looking to pass. And even if he was, what are those guys going to do? The problem with our bench is we've got too many guys to do the exact fucking same thing. What do I always preach on this channel? Versatility, versatility, and more versatility. Okay? We don't have that. What's the difference, truly, what's the difference between Derrick Jones Jr. and Javante Green? I'll wait. Let's throw Tony Bradley up in there, a.k.a. Mama Hips. Let's throw Mama Hips up in there. What's the difference? Okay, there's no difference. They all do the same thing. They come in and play defense, even though Tony Bradley started. They come in and play defense. That's it. Okay, well, you know, Derrick Jones is athletic. Yeah, so is Javante. Okay, maybe Tony Bradley not so much. Okay, fair enough, fine. But they just come in and play defense. Meanwhile, when we're talking about optimally what this Wizards team would look like, they got KCP, Kuzma, and Trez coming off the bench, okay? What do those guys do? All of them have something different, okay? They may have one or two things that overlap and link them, like, okay, Kuzma and KCP can shoot, okay? But if we're comparing it to Kuzma is a much better rebounder, while KCP is a much better defender, Okay, if you start comparing Trez with either of the other two, there's things to come out. Both of them shoot better than Trez. Trez is a much better rebounder than either one of them, and he's a much he's a much better physical defender in the post. I'm not saying he's a great defender, but he's a much better physical defender in the post. Okay, he's a better low post scorer than all of them, and so you can start to do things and look at things. Now Kuzma and Trez are better rebounders than KCP. Again, these guys have different things that contribute to winning outside of just, okay, we all can put the ball in the hole, okay? They all do something different. When I start talking to you about Javante Green and Derrick Jones and, and, and uh, uh, um, um, Mama Hips, same fucking thing. They all want to score at the rim, and they all play defense. They don't do shit else. Don't do shit else. And that's the problem with the bench. We need different shit, which is why when I suggest trading some of these guys, people are like, oh, okay, well, we shouldn't trade Vooch. Look, I would love to keep Vooch. I would love to keep DeRozan. But you, you, you don't have enough. At some point, one of those guys has to go to fill out the rest of the roster. You gave up two to three players and three firsts for Vooch. You would love to have Wendell Carter right now, okay? You know, you ended up trading Daniel Gafford. You would love to have him right now, okay? When you start looking at the bench, I mean, even Caruso. We can add Caruso to the other guys, and he just does what? The same fucking shit that they do, albeit with better handles. So I personally, and even if we start including some of the other guys like Troy Brown Jr. and shit, none of these guys are shooters. None of these guys are like prolific rebounders. You know, none of these guys are passers. There's things that our team is missing depth-wise on our bench that Washington and other teams have. It's versatility. So, yes, when we start talking trades, I, the two people I would want to keep the most, I mean, well, let's just keep Caruso off the, the list. Uh, and you know what? Throw Kobe White in there. Kobe White is a scorer, but whatever. You know, Kobe White. Kobe White can go for all I care. The only other guy on there that I want to keep outside of Caruso is Derrick Jones. 
And if we're trading, I need something different. You know, whatever Tony Bradley, Troy Brown, Javante Green. I love Javante Green. Y'all know that. But we need something different. We, we need something different. We need a different dynamic off the bench, which can affect winning. Because when you look at Washington, when you start looking at Miami, when you start looking at some of these other teams like the Golden State Warriors, the guys that come off that bench have different skill sets and specialties which contribute to winning. They don't have too much overlap. And so, well, Acme when it got <coughs> Acme when it got players who play defense to cover up for blah blah blah. Defense ain't the issue with this team. It's offense and clutter. And if you have some guys off the bench that can maybe score the ball or shoot the ball or can pass the ball or monsters on rebound, including Alize, because I don't include Alize is not good to me. But if you have guys that come in and can do different things, it makes the team better. I would much rather have KCP, Trez, and Kuzma on the bench than the other guys I mentioned. But anyway, that's all I got. Okay. Um, if you guys have questions or want to debate, you know, a point, feel free to comment. But I hope y'all have a good one. Peace.